welcome to the normal not normal podcast with me oliver phelps and me james phelps and thank you for joining us this week for our valentine's special that's right we are quite a uh, loving bunch aren't we yeah why not <laughs> today we have some of your story times questions and obviously your did you knows yes exactly they'll be coming up a little bit later on uh but james while we're talking about like valentine's day stuff and there's probably listening to this right now people who have just been thinking to themselves either one it's a load of cards while up two they're really really into it and it's a really special day for them and their significant other or three any other people who are maybe single and just thinking i dodged a bullet this year have you got any experiences in any of those three fields i think you know i do but i'm not going to go into half of them um so <laughs> uh i've i've been um oh. Sorry, I've, I'm I'm trying this drink at the moment, and it's literally hot water, honey, cumin, and ginger. Why? I read somewhere it was good for you, and it must be because I can just feel it just like clearing out anything. Anyway, sorry. Go on, go on to your lovely story. No, I was I was going to say that um, normally my I, I spend Valentine's Day having a nice meal uh, with the with the other half and the dog, obviously needs to be involved um but i think i want to i so we decided to go to the cinema on valentine's day uh i wanted to go and see the new jackass film um but i don't know if that's going to make the cut for valentine's day or not but either way we'll have a a, a nice time just hanging out Mm -hmm. very good very good we don't really do it in my house but i say we don't really do it like i'll buy i'll buy my wife like a card or something like that and maybe every one in three years I might get one back. Mm. That's about as far as it goes, really. You're a romantic okay bunch. With. We are. We are very romantic. Very romantic. <laughs> well, I'm sure you know that. <laughs> anyway, uh, so that would be, I think in terms of like any fails or anything like that, I always remember um, when in, in, my, in my youth, um, always thinking it was a real overblown thing. And then... Yeah, that's cause, like, yeah. Is that because you know didn't have I mean? any Valentine's yeah. Day cards, though? Is that... Probably. That may be in it. <laughs> and then and then and then yeah and that's the thing as well like, it comes into your head like oh no why haven't i got any or or who do i give it to without do you know what i mean but i think it's more of a i think over here in the uk maybe it's, it certainly wasn't anyway a big deal as opposed to i remember being in new york for the first time and it was over the valentine's day weekend and i couldn't get over the amount of people walking around with massive bouquets of flowers and stuff like that but that was a real big thing. But I think that's a thing for like those type of holidays anyway in the States, isn't it? I don't know. I think it may be where you were. You're probably in like the romantic part of town. That's probably, the hazard I guess probably. I'm going to go with. But, you know, it's a fun It's a fun time. And it's. I think it's as long as you take it with a bit of fun. Because uh, I know some guys who get really, really down actually when, they're, when they were single. Um, mm. That they didn't have a... a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend they were very <laughs> low um but i think it's just one of those things where it's just you know just have a bit of fun with it if you're single you're single and just enjoy that as well it's just another day and let's face it pancake days come round the corner as well see now that that is a holiday i can get that's behind. a festival yeah that that is a festival in itself but anyway less about pancake day more about valentine's day um and we move on to our story times and our first story time is a voice note from up there in well i can only assume it's a bit chilly michigan right now this is Lindsay. hi james and oliver so i wanted to share with everyone the story of my worst valentine's day ever um it was back my freshman year of college i remember i was taking a lot of really hard classes at the time i had a big anatomy exam coming up so i was super stressed out Um, But I was really looking forward to Valentine's Day. My boyfriend at the time had told me that he planned us a date. So I was really looking forward to it. I remember the day came and I opened his car door and gave him his gift and said, Happy Valentine's Day. Uh, He then looked over at me and said, "Uh, I didn't know we were getting each other gifts. So, which normally I can forgive that. But during our drive, he proceeded to make up excuses as well as uh, somehow make it my fault that he forgot a gift kind of strange anyways the movie was just okay something more he was interested in than me so I didn't really enjoy it we then went back to his apartment Um, at this point it was getting kind of late and he never took me out to dinner so I was very very hungry and listen 
we all know that when women get hangry, it's never a good thing. <laughs> so <laughs> proceeded to politely end the date. And I walked back to my dorm from his apartment, stopping to get myself a Valentine's Day cookie cake, which I did not share with anyone. <laughs> um, anyways, thank you all for listening. Um, I hope everyone else is having a much better Valentine's Day than that was. And yeah, love your podcast. <laughs> Lindsay, that is brilliant. Oh, wow. Yeah, two things, two things definitely to take from that, which I think is universal. Hangry ladies are to be avoided. And try not to, and if, if you just if you say, oh, I didn't realize we were doing it, don't try and deflect it onto the other person. <laughs> <laughs> But well done, Linz, on just saying, you know what, I've had enough here. I'm off. Definitely. Thank you very much for sharing that, Lindsay. And um, I hope the, the cookie was good. Mm-hmm. See, every cloud has a silver lining. So our next story time is from Michaela in Connecticut. And I imagine that that's pretty chilly this time of year as well. So she says, I have a funny story about Valentine's Day from when I was eight or nine years old. In my elementary school, we could celebrate Valentine's Day in a big way. We would have a big Valentine's Day themed lunch with a professional band playing music in the cafeteria while we ate. We had we had to bring Valentine's candies and cards for everyone in the class and we would pass them at our class party. On the bus home at the end of the day, the sugar rush kicked in. The bus driver had had to constantly tell us to sit down, but we physically could not sit still. Eventually, someone threw up all over the place. So the moral of the story is letting elementary school kids eat candy all day is a huge mistake. But thank you so much for listening to my story and happy Valentine's Day to everybody. <laughs> Michaela, your school sounds absolutely incredible. A professional band playing at lunchtime. I just remember at our uh, Valentine's Day when we were at school, the prank was you would write a card from another student to another student and leave it in Mm. their desk. So because we had those old fashioned desks where you keep your stuff inside it. So you'd get in there before the class came in, you'd quickly run around and oh, yeah, that was a a fun little prank we used to play on every uh, I think everybody did it to everybody else. So by the end of our couple of years at school, um, before I went on to big school, as it's called, Everybody figured out not to trust who, like you, it was quite a good way, actually. If you're shy of sending a Valentine's Day card, you could always deny it was from you if it didn't go down too well. Yeah, and there was a year as well, because I remember it was, um, they, there was a Simpsons episode when Ralph gets the Valentine's Day card. And Do you choose me? Who, the amount of people who would write, let's, I choose you, choose you in a card, or let's be friends. Yeah. Standard thing, standard thing. But anyway. Michaela, that sounds like that bus journey was not just from school, but from hell on the way home uh, with everything <laughs> with everything going on. But thank you so much for sharing your Valentine's Day uh, stories. Anyway, our final story time comes from Lilith in China. And Lilith says, this story happened in my third year of high school. I was studying away from home and had to spend the spring festival alone in a strange city. On Valentine's Day, I decided to take a break from studying and relax. I've always liked astronomy, and whenever I was under pressure, I would go stargazing. Something you do, you like to do, don't you say? Very good. Anyway, I brought a astronomical telescope with me and put it in my study room. So I didn't have a Valentine's date, but I did have a telescope. My study room was on the top floor of the building. It's a fantastic place for stargazing. That night, I immersed myself in stargazing until I felt a little sleepy and decided to go home. I walked out of the room and found the whole corridor in darkness. At first, I thought there was a power outage, but on the way down, I noticed there were no lights or people in the building, and the sound of my footsteps and breathing was clear in the empty, dark space. So, I was was so scared... That I ran all the way downstairs to the floor to the front door, only to find it was locked. The clock in the hall showed that it was nearly midnight, and I had realised I had been so obsessed with stargazing that I had not heard the security guard ask if anyone was left in the building, and I was locked in. Eventually, I was able to get hold of my key, to get hold of the key man to let me out. But I'm pretty sure this was the most unique Valentine's Day I have ever have. <laughs> Very good. Well, to, to be honest, you could turn that round. You could be like, oh, I'm locked in. Back on the roof and carry on stargazing. I mean, yeah, that's, how my, you... that's how my mind works. Well, it would be. Unless, would be, they, unless, have... unless clouds come in and then you're stuck. 
Yeah, and Lilith still had to get home. This is true. But thank you so much for sharing that with us. I was trying to think, actually, after reading that, if I've ever been locked in anywhere like that. And um, I think the worst, the worst place that's ever happened to me was I got off an aeroplane once and I got stuck somehow. It was a very quiet flight. There was like, I don't know, six people on this flight. And I landed at the airport and got stuck in between the jetway and the main corridor where you go across. Ah, uh, so yes, but the tell the full story how there. you got... Tell the full story how you ended up there, Oliver. I remember this happening. No, no, no I was travelling on my own. That's another time. Um, was this not, no, this oh, one, right. So I was, okay. I, was literally, I was literally there, right, looking around, like, well, where can I go? Because the person who was in front of me, because I was trying to get my stuff off the... Uh, um, the overhead type thing. So I was getting that together anyway, making sure I had everything, leaving. And the clever spark in front of me thought, oh, okay, I'll just shut the door. And they're like, obviously security tight. So I'm on the phone, pick up the phone, and there's a um, like a, a landline, what's in the, in this part where I am. I pick it up and I say, hello? And the man said, yes, who's this? I said, I'm, I'm stuck. He said, where are you stuck? I said, I don't know. I'm stuck in between the plane and the, and here we go. No, you can't be. And he started like debating with me that I can't get out. Cut a long story short, after about twenty five minutes, yeah, I did get let out. Very good. I, I I was locked on a balcony once. In I was in Florida, and the hotel that we we're staying at was well, I think we're on like the the fifth or sixth floor, um, down towards West Palm Beach in the south of Florida, and it was in June July time because it was very hot and very sticky. So I was in my hotel room. My my missus went to um, the shops just to get some water and things like that. So I was in the room on my own. And I decided that I'd go on the balcony to see what's going on, see the view. And as you open the balcony door, it's one of those rooms where as soon as you open the door, the air conditioning turns off. And it was very, like 100% humidity, very hot, very sticky. So I went outside, shut the door. So the air conditioner carried on and I just carried on looking out and it was lovely coming up around sunset. It was lovely. Anyway, tried to come back door. As I'd shut the door, the latch, which kind of bolts it in, had dropped and I couldn't open it. I was literally stuck on this balcony. So I was frantically looking around and I'm too high up to shimmy down the side of it or anything like that. So I started wait like big hand gesture waving at people on the beach or people down there. And they did that thing where they just wave back. There's no... There's, How going, are you waving? Help! But like, kind of like quite dramatically. And they just kind of, they kind of like, hey! And carried on moving. So uh, for another five minutes, I then ended up asking the guy next in the room next to me if he could call the front desk and tell them that I'm locked on the balcony. So he ended up. I don't. But he didn't. He didn't do that. He ended up passing the room phone around the wall. So what? I've got yeah. So I've got. He's like. So anyway, the the person on reception answers. And they're like, oh, "Hi, Mr. Smith." I was like, "No, this isn't Mr. Smith. This is Mr. Phelps in the room next door." And she's like, "Okay." I was like, "Yeah, I'm trapped on my balcony." And you could see her like looking out of the reception window as I'm talking to. Her. Anyway, long long story short. I was rescued, but it was quite a uh, hot, sticky, and bizarre how the neighbour <laughs> helped me out in that way. I don't know why you would just say you don't worry, mate. I'll come right. Or ha- I suppose you didn't have a room get in. with you, did you? No, no, he couldn't yeah. get in. You see, but he could have just cooled down himself. He could have done. Anyway, mysteries of life. So the next t- subject we move on to is your questions. So Claire and Carly from New Jersey in the USA ask what were the best or your worst Valentine's Day experiences? I would say my my worst experiences would be, I suppose, following on the vein of what Lindsay said, is I'm not realising that the person I was seeing at the time and I were doing Valentine's Day. Really awkward. Really awkward. So I just came out with, I I started going down this spider's web though. Oh, sorry, spider web. I started going down this little like labyrinth of just making out this story of like why I don't do it like really against it i think it's sacrilegious i started started getting really really deep just to get away from the fact of i just didn't do anything about it so never lie people because you never know where you're going to finish ruin the whole day as well uh my my worst valentine's day experiences were or my (laughs) 
experience. So I've got a couple. The main one that sticks into my head was when I got bad, bad food poisoning the day before. And I was in, do you remember this? We were in Los Angeles and my girlfriend hadn't seen me for like a month, two months. And she'd flown out from the UK specifically for to see me. And the night, the day she arrived, we were going to a party. So we, we had a Chinese before we went because I'm classy like that. I, <laughs> good meal. Anyway, bad Chinese. And I was ill. I was, I was literally hallucinating ill. I had, I had, you know, another brick in the wall, the Pink Floyd song. You know, there's the teacher that says, if you don't eat your meat, how can you eat your pudding? I had that guy in my head, like talking to me. I was bad way. I should really, in looking back, I should, probably should have gone to hospital. So I was literally so weak. I couldn't do anything. I couldn't even get up. I couldn't, I, I, I was literally a zombie. Um, and so it's probably worse for her because her Valentine's Day was spent you walking around like, like I was very Santa nice Monica, wasn't it? I was very nice I stepped up and was like you know what should we should we go for a nice little walk and grab some hot dogs or she, so I mean, she could have sat next to you no I <laughs> tried to be for the whole day I wouldn't have known if she was there to be honest that was a bad time um but yes I would I'd probably put that down as my worst Valentine's mm. Day um mm. Next girlfriend and I broke up on Valentine's Day, actually, one year. That was interesting. No, oh, that was fun. Well, no, it was an amicable one. What, in a card? In a, yeah. <laughs> this, ain't, this ain't happening. No, it was, it was very amicable. It was kind of one of those, we realised if, if we're not into each other like that on that day, then it ain't going to happen. So there we are. Fun stories, fun stories. Anyway, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we're going to lighten the mood a bit here because Rebecca's asked a question that says, have you ever switched places on a date? And... Rebecca, I'm going to be very honest with this one. No. Um, no, never. Never. It's never been anything that I think either of us would comprehend doing. I think the nearest I've ever come to that was when I was very nice and took your took your now significant other out for a walk when you weren't feeling very well. That's about as far as it goes. Oh, yeah. I think best Valentine's Day I could put was when I was on... So we went on holiday a couple of years ago. Um just to the south coast in the UK with the dog. I mean, she had such a cool day, just like hanging out. That was really, that was, I'll put that down as a, a nice day um, because we ended up in one of my favourite pizza, pizza restaurants. That's quite good, yeah. So I think it, it's all, funny, it, all like, comes, like, it all comes back to food with me. Yeah, so I, anyway. I, remember, I, remember, I remember going out once for a meal with, uh, with my wife and my wife's the type of person, right? So if we've got someone on the next table and they're goggly eyes at each other and like start talking like all mushy, she would literally want to look at me just like, like that. So that's kind of the relationship level we're at when it comes to that type of thing. Uh, but anyway, next one. Uh, James, who's your, uh, who's your question from? It's from Henrietta in Germany. And she says, what is the best gift you have ever got for Valentine's Day? So with you, I'm guessing you haven't. Valentine's or a late press machine, which came today. I bought that myself came today uh yeah i was looking at a video of something the other day and it's terrible that i don't do leg day so i was like i need to do something about this everyone will see this later in the year um but yeah so that's by the point i'm trying to think great presents i've ever had for valentine's day yeah i don't like maybe some chocolate maybe i don't know i did get a very romantic present though a couple of uh what last year should i show you i'll go and get it hang on What's yours, James? Tell everybody. My one would be so. For, so for Christmas, I well just after Christmas, I bought an old school Sega Mega Drive or Sega Genesis if you're in the US, um, because that was my first ever console and there's so many great games on it. But there's one game I could not find, which I used to love, which my now wife ended up getting for me for Valentine's Day, called Rolo to the Rescue. Rolo the Elephant. Do you remember that? Rolo, it was honestly, it's one of the best arcade games you'll ever play. So it's about a, a Rolo who's a, an elephant and he just goes away and trying to free his friends who have been captured. And so there's a there's a beaver, there's a squirrel. With a rubber ring, with a rubber ring. Who could go and walk. And they all had different, yeah. they could all do different, and a bunny rabbit. And they could all do different tasks. But Rolo was the main leader. And anyway, I'll go back. It's an amazing game. If you do get a chance to play it, I definitely recommend it because it's just sweet and cool. Music was fun. So I'd say that's probably the best gift I had for Valentine's Day. 
Very good. Right, so shall I show you what I bought uh, last year for my wife? And it is a golf grip uh, aid. So basically, when you hold it, it shows you how to hold the best grip. Now my wife she doesn't play golf. Nothing. Well, this is why I tried. So I actually even bought her on top of that a golf club for where it could go on the top. And um, yeah, she's if she's if she's swung this thing twice. In the last year, I would be surprised. So, lesson learned. Lesson learned. Maybe not. I was going to say, knowing knowing your wife like I do, I'm pretty sure I know how that went. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She let me know. <laughs> She's like, no, <laughs> don't. Anyway, I'm going to put that over then. Um, hopefully, it'll find some news another day. Um, so, guys, thank you so much for getting in touch with the uh, with the questions and stuff like that. So that brings us on to the next part of your participation episode: the did you knows and the did you know. Uh, what I'm going to start off with comes from Flonny in Colorado in the USA and says, did you know that wearing your heart on your sleeve is more than just a phrase? In the Middle Ages, young men and women drew names to see who their valentine would be. Then they would wear the name printed to their sleeve for one week so that everyone would know. Incredible. Well, well. I've got to be honest, Flonny, I did think when I started reading that in the Middle Ages... That they like some people. It's something else. But, yeah, like a genuine heart. But no, that's that's a lot more subtle and nice. Very good. Well, great. I I love it when you learn what phrases mean, like where they came from. The next question is from Lou from China, and it's very relevant for right now. Did you know Beijing is the first city to host both the Summer and Winter Olympic Games? Yeah. Which is, Taking part it's, right now, it's a, a the Winter Olympics. I, it's one of the, the a special. I think Olymp the Summer Olympics have some events, but definitely Winter Olympics. There are certain ones which you only ever watch every four years, mm, mm. and you get very critical of people who are doing these amazing, like the ski, like the skiing, um, like the half pipes with the snowboards and things like that. And you see them go up and they do whatever nine fifty or whatever that is, and they land it. But if they don't land it completely. You kind of sit there on your sofa like, oh, that's going to cost. Not being yeah. amazed about what amazing skills it is that they're doing. Yeah, I was watching the uh, the, ice, the ice skating the other day um, and there was this, this girl who slipped twice. You're kind of like, oh dear, oh dear. She's going to get marked down for that. Thinking, forgetting the fact she's done like nine triple flips or something like that in a row. Yes, yeah, so you kind of, you do, I suppose you do get a bit couch coaching as it were, but no, it's been it's been quite interesting watching the Olympics. I've never been to uh, to a, a Winter Games, um, but yeah, it would be something I'd like to do at some point. I think maybe, yeah, maybe somewhere a little bit close to home would be easier to get to, obviously. Uh, but yeah, it's quite it's quite quite a different Olympics, though, isn't it? Without getting too controversial, what with all the man made snow. Well, the, I think also the um, current world that we're living in, the crowds aren't as big as they could be. In a normal, like a couple of years, <laughs> normal, he says on the normal, not normal podcast, um, a couple of years ago with that, like before all the pandemic and everything happened. So I think the atmosphere is definitely affecting things. Um, but it's still cool to watch the best in the world doing what they do. Apart from cross country skiing, I cannot understand doing that. I've tried it, I could not get the grasp of why you'd want to go uphill on your skis. Well, I like the one with the gun. What's the what's the what was it? Um, I like the version where you, you have to shoot a target. No, there's a, there's a game where you uh, biathlon. Oh, the biathlon, yeah. Where you ski and then you have to shoot something miles away. Oh, that's mm. very that's very uh, cool. But yeah, skiing uphill. Why? I think you just I think you just need to think to yourself: Is this is this a thing? Is this a sport? <laughs> it clearly is. I know. It's, it's more of a sport than probably, some stuff. I could probably appreciate it more if we had snow more here and you'd probably have to learn to do it. Well, don't Beijing, am I right in saying that Beijing gets a similar amount of snowfall per annum than, as the same as like London? I don't know about like that. that. I know that it's like that. bloody cold there right now. Looks it looks very cold. So if you are at the Olympic at the uh, Olympic Games, guys, hopefully you're staying warm and staying safe, and uh, we're wishing you all the best in whatever you are getting up to out there. Right, moving on to um, 
still in Asia, but a warmer part of Asia. Uh, this, ne- this next did you know comes from India, from Rashi, who says, did you know that you can use Harry Potter's... Yeah. Did you know that you can use Harry Potter spells on your iPhone? For example, if you say to Siri Lumos, it turns the light flash on. And if you say Nox, it turns it off again. Ooh, there is a hack for you. Lumos. Look at that. Fair play. So it works on Samsung. Say say Nox. Nox. No. I didn't understand. Oh. Lumos off. No. Oh, dear. Oh, no. It won't turn off. Hey, right. You know, if you lock it and you say, like, Aloha Mora, would that unlock it? It's a pretty terrible uh, security hack, but, you know. <laughs> How do you? Yeah, but you can't, it's, you can't unlock it. Unless you've got your... Uh, oh, I see what you mean. You can't right, talk unless yes. it's not, can you? Oh, I see. Yes. Oh, well. We're talking about learning this day, isn't it? So not only on Valentine's Hello, Day... Ooh. No. Okay. Not work. Oh, no. Why has it come to my bank? Uh, okay. <laughs> <Yeah>, empty bank. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So if you are, some, I'll tell you what. To... There's something to do if you're on your own today on Valentine's Day. See how many Harry Potter spells work on your phone, and let us know. Yes. Or if you're not on your own on Valentine's Day and you need something to do with your other half, enter Valentine's game. and, and <laughs> there's a game. I mean, yeah. I remember one thing though that we used to do, um, which a few people used to find really in- enjoyable, which was um, so we'd be we'd be sat here talking. And someone would just say something like, Alexa. Oh, mine's just gone off. I can't say that anymore. It's listening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say Lumos and see if the lights lights in the house came on or something like that. Alexa, um, play my Valentine's Day playlist. What have you got? Well, I haven't got Alexa. No, well, I've got my phone. I've been yours. Oh, you mean no, someone else, mate? I just thought of a funny thing, actually. You know when you were just talking about, like, Valentine's playlists? Yeah. What What do you think is classed as the most romantic song ever? Oh, Brian Adams. Do you think ever? That would be it. It's got to be up there, hasn't it? Okay. Everything most... I do, I do for you. Let's, see, let's, have, let's have a look. Oh. What is the most romantic song ever? What is the most romantic song ever? Songs frequently mentioned on the web include Unchained Melody, Can't Help Falling in Love, Thinking tune, Out Loud, tune. and others. See, I can actually listen to all of those tunes very happily. Yeah, Unchained Melody is pretty good, isn't it? Mm, mm, good karaoke song. Got to be some anyway. other, yeah, but you, you have some, there's got to be some good rocky songs in there. Surely, like, every glam rock song is, in one way or another, about love. So you could throw those in there as well. A Rocky song? Not a Rocky song. Oh, I thought you were going to say. <laughs> like, I think they like Rocky Four or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, James, moving on. I think we've got one There's more. There's no easy now. way out. Sorry. The f- yeah, that would be a Valentine's Day song. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> especially, if you haven't, especially if you haven't planned your own... Uh, Plan your own gift or anything like that. The other easy way up. So our last uh, did you know this week from you guys is from Chelsea in Australia. Thank you very much, Chelsea. And Chelsea says, did you know that the planet Mars has a constant humming noise? Which is very true. So I've looked this up. Last year, 2020, February 24th, you know that there was uh, there's a great spacecraft on Mars right now. And they decided to look into it. And they realised that under the dusty surface of Mars, there's a hum. It's pretty quiet, but it's very constant. It's like a drone. And it's basically the sound of the beat of quates rippling around the planet. The it's also the source. Yeah, you know how we get like earthquakes and things like that. Oh, quakes. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. But it could also be doing, are there Martians down there? Are they moving mm. stuff? Oh, Who knows really these things? Imagine if it's like an underground, you know, you walk past a club. Just rave the whole time. And it's just a rave, the Martians just having a rave under the surface. 
That's why they haven't done anything for the last how many millions Millennium. of years. Yeah, a good rave going on in Mars. That'd be what a great idea. Could you imagine people going on to that type of thing, though? I mean, we could. I suppose we could. Uh, I'd, be, I'd be happy to go up there for that. That'd be, you know, if if and when mankind finally get there, and they ask he or she, whoever gets there first, and they come back and say, "What did you see? What was it like?" There was a rave going on. <laughs> yes. Anyway, we digress. This is all about Valentine's Day, so I don't know how we ended up talking about Mars. We should talk about Venus, <laughs> shouldn't we? Especially Martians. Martians on Especially a rave. Martians having a rave. <laughs> Tell you what, if you are listening to this, right, and uh, we're just we're just giving you ammo. Like if you're on maybe a date, maybe you've gone on a first date or something like that for Valentine's Day, and uh, and you you know running out of conversations, always great to just say, you know, do you think if Martians like there's a constant beat going on Mars, do you think it's because they're constantly into like dance music and just like have rapes the whole time, and then see if your uh, other half or the, the person you're side at the table or whoever you are neither acknowledges that and they can kind of gauge if you're on a good uh, if you're on the same wavelength when it comes to humour uh, scientific intellectual debate and um, yeah just quirkiness what a good test there we are yeah we can call it you... we, we'll call it the normal not normal testing done okay uh, I've got a couple of did you knows as is Valentine's Day so Everyone thinks of there's a few things that you always associate with Valentine's Day and love in general. So you've got the love heart, you've got the uh, flowers, all that kind of stuff. But obviously, there's also Cupid. So he's the charming little lad who has the bow and arrow and can make people fall in love, right? So this came about because Cupid, as a idea or a um, what. Well, knowledge of existence an can be traced fairy well no the he could be, no he could be traced back to the 700 to 700 bc to the greek god named eros right who was actually very handsome immortal and he was a man with the intimidating power to make people fall in love but it wasn't until the 4th century BCE that the Romans adopted him into the image of a cute little boy with a bow and arrow and called him Cupid. So by the turn of the 19th century, Cupid had became very linked to Valentine's Day due to his love matching powers. Hmm. He'd probably be cancelled these days, wouldn't he, Cupid? Making You'd wonder what you're doing in, like, what are you doing there, mate? Like, Leave him alone. Um, but also, okay, here's a question. Before he became uh, with the Romans, where they turned him into like this this image of like a, a cute little boy with a bow and arrow. What was he before that? He was just a very handsome man who apparently oh, was could intimidate okay. who could intimidate people into falling in love. <laughs> just is absolutely you, 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 you love. now. <laughs> okay, okay. You, you love her. You love him. Him love you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, anyway, we another one would be. In the 1300s, it officially became a holiday associated with love, obviously Valentine's Day. So at the end of the 5th century, Rome, the Roman Pope officially declared the date of the 14th of February, St. Valentine's Day. But it wasn't until the Middle Ages, though, that the holiday became associated with love and romance. And the tradition that first started from the common belief from France and England that birds started their mating season on 14th of February. Oh, right. Like those bloody pigeons right now outside. They're back there again. They're a pain, aren't they? They're they a pain. absolutely are. And for yes. all those who don't want to know any more facts about Valentine's Day, I've got a very, very random one. Did you know a standard pencil, if you were to draw non-stop, obviously you could sharpen it, but if you didn't need sharpening, you just keep drawing, that lead from the pencil can draw for 35 miles in a straight line. Well, uh, how have we got from Cupid to drawing with a pencil for 35 miles? Well, if you're running out of ideas for things to do on a date. Oh, OK. OK. Fair enough. Fair enough. Got, you, know, you haven't got a lot. If you, if you say you haven't got a lot, reach into your pocket, reach into your bag. You've got a pencil. I bet this can go for 35 miles. Come on. We're off. Let's go for a walk. I Right. So, you know, you're talking about the as long, as long as the And then you could get the other person behind you with an eraser just to make, you know, you don't want to litter the place. Yeah, but how far would an eraser go, though? 
Well, that, oh, there's a question. What would run out first? I think the eraser. Uh, but, no, but not like a little thing, but like a big, you know, the big things that you never, you know, the, you know, the things that you get given as a kid when you go to school, you get the things which are like bigger than a bar of soap and they never run out. Looks like I a refresher bar. Um, yes. the, but yeah, you know, we're talking about the pigeons and stuff like that. Well, those of you uh, who listened to the episodes last season uh, will be aware that I purchased two fake owls for the back garden. And someone was asking me this question the other day about it. How are the owls getting on? Bloody awful would be the main thing about it. They are absolute waste of time. All they do, they just sit there right now making my back garden look bloody ugly. Because you've got one on, the, one on top of the shed who just sits there. His head doesn't even rotate anymore. And another one who sat on a wall uh, who's got that much uh, concrete inside him that he weighs a ton anyway. So I've got to be careful how to move the thing. And it's just, it just sits there now mocking me. And not just mocking me, said birds sit next to it as if they're having a chat with it. <laughs> Awful. <laughs> Absolutely awful. So that would be my um, that would be my. I could have told you that would bother buying anything like that. So just out of curiosity, did you get your wife a Valentine's Day card? Yes. Am I expecting one? No. (laughs) I actually found so I'm being I'm being told to say this or anything, but I discovered there's a a little village in Wiltshire, in like towards the south of England, called Love. And they they've got a village charity, which send you love cards, so Valentine's Day, but it has literally from love. Check it out. Is it's that where you got yours now, from? But it is, yeah. Yeah, maybe all them now for next year. There you go. Check yeah. it out. Anyway, but there's obviously Guys, a place in the world. Oh, that'd be good. What? Where are, are the maybe, other places? Maybe not order it from hell in the USA. Hell, I've been to hell. Yeah, I know. And I've been to boring. And I've been to dull. (laughs) Great place to go. Anyway. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. So just remember to please keep sending your story times, your questions, your did you knows to the normal, not normal podcast at gmail.com and join us next week. And happy Valentine's Day, wherever you are. I've been Oliver Phelps. I've been James Phelps, guys. Happy Valentine's Day. Have a great day doing whatever you do. If you're not doing anything, have a great day doing that as well. Take care, look after yourselves, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.